Good morning, friends. Uh, I am going to present a video on treatment of humerus shell fracture by anti bridge plating. Bridge plate used as a plate is an internal or extramedullary splint fixed to proximal and distal intact fragment. The intermediate fracture zone is left untouched, bypass the plate. The MIPO is known as access to the bone through soft tissue window, minimal trauma to soft tissue bone by indirect reduction, minimal or no contact with the fracture, using tools which causes small footprints. Correction of length, rotation and exit alignment of the main fragment can be achieved indirectly. Relative fracture site stability provided by the bridging plate support indirect healing and callus formation. We can use this in young and middle aged patient, fracture 4 cm distal to surgical neck and olecranon. The main technique is use supine position and this is a preoperative fracture. And now we are showing first uh, the video technique. We will keep the first 12 hole plate over the arm. This is a preoperative fracture, shaft, a transverse fracture. Now we will in a, a video. Uh, first we will mark the incision. We will keep a 12 hole plate under image intensifier. We will check that the position of the plate is perfect. And we mark a distal and a proximal incision. We are checking that the plate position is absolutely correct. This is we are checking it now that plate is perfectly placed. Now I am making a proximal incision over the deltoid over the anterior lateral surface. I am directly putting the incision over the deltoid and in distal part I am just marking a slight incision around 2 cm incision at the gap between a brachioradialis and a biceps brachii muscles. Here incision is directly I am putting over the deltoid muscle. After incision and this is the distal incision between a biceps and the brachioradialis. With the help of the finger, I can just pass a finger. I'm cutting the deep fascia with the help of the scissor. I am cutting deep fascia and then I will pass my finger between the muscles just over the bone then I will pass a bone lever and retract whole of the muscle belly medial side and along with that neurovascular structure is also retracted and another bone lever and I will retract. So I will have a raw bone surface in front of us. I will pass a little periosteum to make a track. Then I will pass my finger from the proximal incision and then I will pass a blunt bone lever. And I will just pass it and then I will feel it with my finger that I can able to feel this bone lever. Then I will take a 12 hole plate and then slide this plate from proximal incision and to the distal part. Now I am pushing this plate. This is easily plate can be glided over the anterior surface of the humerus. I can feel in the distal incision the plate is coming and now I am okay with this. I will check the plate position. Adjust it under image intensifier. Now I am checking it. The perfect position of the plate, six hole in the proximal fragment and six hole in the distal fragment. This I am there. I am checking it that it is beautifully lying over the anterior surface of the humerus. Now I will drill first the screws in the distal part. I am the going to put the screw. The fracture, uh, near the fracture, the screws 
in the distal part. We are going to put three screws each on these segments. I am in the distal part, most superior screw I am going to put, measuring the length and then I am going to tight this screw. I am not going to tight this screw completely. I will screw this and I am tight only partial tightening of this screw will be done. So out of the three, the superior most screw is put in first in the distal part, that is the, uh, the screw hole which is close to the fracture. Then I will drill the inferior one screw in the proximal part, again the screw hole which is closest out of the sixth one, I am putting the third one which is close to the fracture. Then I will tighten this screw and I will again partially tighten this one. I will again adjust the fracture position. I will check in the image intensifier. Now I will completely tighten this proximal screw, checking it position ok. Then again I am tightening the screw in the distal part. At the same time, I am looking in the image intensifier that my fracture position is not disturbed. Fracture should be well aligned. There will be no rotational malalignment. And again, I am tightening the screw in the proximal part. So, simultaneous tightening of the screws at the proximal and in the distal part is done with the fracture position is maintained. Fracture should be well reduced. Once I am achieved it, then I am completely tightening this proximal screw. And I am again, once I tighten the proximal screw, I will tighten the screw in the distal part also with the fracture position well maintained, fracture is well aligned. I can see in the image intensify the fracture position is absolutely okay. Again, I am do full tightening of the in the distal part. So, one one screw are completely tightened, then I am putting the second screw in the distal fragment. Once you have one screw on each side is completely tightened, I will put second screw in the distal part completely tightened. Now I am putting the second screw in the proximal part. Completely going to completely tighten this one. So two two screws on each side are there. Then I will put the third screw in the proximal part. I am going to tighten this screw also. So three screws I have put in the proximal part. Fracture position is again rechecked is confirmed, then I am putting the most distal screw in the distal part. I am going to put the screws completely tight down. You see I am not uh, checking uh, continuously checking the CR and only off and on I am checking the position in the CR. 
Now you can see incision and now I'll check. It is a, the, you can see that AP view. I'm going to move the C arm from top, from bottom to top. You can see the alignment. The arm position, the arm is moving, the fracture is well reduced. Now I am moving the arm. I am usually do not check arm moving the lateral position now, moving the arm. And now you can see the fracture position, fracture is absolutely okay, screw size is perfect. And with this two small incision, two centimeters, this is the post op x ray of the same patient. Few cases, this is post op and at three months, fracture united. Another case, post op and 18 months fracture united. So anatomical reduction is rare mandatory in humerus. We must achieve an acceptable reduction. What is acceptable reduction? Shortening of 3 cm, angulation up to 20 degree and rotation less than 30 degree is very well accepted in humerus. You can see this post op x-ray in 4 year how beautifully humerus is remodeled. Even literature suggests that MIPPO is a good technique. So MIPPO is not standard for indicated cases. For multifragmentary fracture, shaft, or bed soft tissue condition. MIPPO is not absolute about short skin incision. It is about technique, how you handle soft tissue. It is not about high tech implant. It is again a technique. To conclude, entry plating is simple, safe, and effective method of treatment for humor shaft fracture. It does not require retention of visualization. We are confident suggesting it is an alternative method for humorous. Thank you very much.